All right, so let's dive into this uh, curriculum architecture design. CAD. CAD, yeah, there we go. Yeah. We're trying to figure out how to build training programs that really make a difference, right? And we've got Guy Wallace along for the ride as our guide. We're going way back to 1995 for this one with a presentation he gave at Eli Lilly. Wow. Talk about a blast from the past. Yeah. But seriously, though, his insights are as relevant today as they were back then. Oh, absolutely. And what's so interesting is how Guy frames this whole idea of CAD, right? It's not just about, like, throwing some training materials together. It's like yeah. he says you're creating a system, a blueprint almost, for aligning training with business goals. Oh, okay. I like that blueprint analogy. Yeah. So it's kind of like those uh, par manufacturers who use standardized parts to efficiently create different models. You're doing the same thing, but for your training program. Exactly. It's all about efficiency and really targeting what you need. Makes total sense. Yeah. And speaking of efficiency, Guy tells the story about Motorola. Remember them. They had something like 18 different soldering courses oh. with tons of overlap. Can you imagine the wasted resources? CAD is all about helping companies like Motorola avoid those kinds of redundancies and really get the most out of their training budgets. Absolutely. And that's where that whole analysis piece comes in, right? You right. really have to dive deep into the nitty gritty of a job, mm -hmm. figure out what knowledge is truly essential and pinpoint those potential performance roadblocks. We're not just trying to like you know, fill heads with information here. Yeah, I, We're trying to give employees the tools to actually overcome real world challenges. That's where it gets really interesting because Guy emphasizes that CAD, it's not a solo mission. This is a team effort. Oh, yeah. It's all about collaboration, especially with the customer. In this case, we're talking about Eli Lilly. You involve them right from the get go. Yeah. You want to understand their needs, their priorities, those performance gaps they're trying to close. The customer involvement is so key. Yeah. You know, it's about making them in this case, Eli Lilly, an active participant in building their training system. Yeah. It's not about just handing them a finished product. Right. And when you do that, you get more buy-in yeah. and you make sure that the final design truly meets their unique needs. Yeah. It's like building a custom home versus buying something prefabricated. I was just going to say that. You're tailoring it to fit perfectly. I love it. Yeah. So just like a well-designed house needs a solid foundation, right? CAD starts with this thorough analysis. Where? You break down those desired outcomes. What should people actually be able to do after this training? Then you figure out, okay, what knowledge, what skills do they need to get there? And then you design the modules, right? Those building blocks we were talking about mm -hmm. that you can assemble into different training events or courses. That's where the architecture in curriculum architecture design really comes into play. You've got flexibility. I see. It. You can arrange those blocks in different ways to create all sorts of configurations based on the needs of different roles. It's all coming together now. I like it. But you know what really brings this to life? Real world examples. And Guy's got a bunch of them. Oh, yeah, he does. But the one that really stuck with me was the Spartan Explorers case. Remember that one? Mm -hmm. They were about to drop a cool $72 million on this massive re-engineering project. $72 million. Big bucks. But here's the kicker. They almost forgot to factor in training costs. Oh, no. Can you imagine? Talk about a potential disaster. Yeah, that's like buying a brand new house but forgetting to budget for furniture. Oh, yeah. You've got this beautiful structure, but you're stuck sitting on the floor. Exactly. And that's where Guy and his CAD expertise came in to save the day. Oh, that's awesome. By analyzing, you know, their company-wide training needs and identifying those mission-critical skills. Right. They were able to ensure a smooth transition and maximize that massive investment all for a fraction of the overall project cost. And that right there is why CAD is so powerful. It shifts that whole conversation from training is an expense to training is an investment. Mm -hmm. You can actually draw a line directly from training to the bottom line. And let's be honest, that's music to any executive's ears. Show me the money. Right, it, exactly. It's about proving that value. Now, another story that I think really drives home the importance of that detailed analysis phase is this case of what Guy calls the $5 billion mistake. $5 billion with a B. $5 billion. And what's crazy is that it all stemmed from this seemingly tiny error early on in the manufacturing process, something that probably seemed insignificant at the time. Wow. It wasn't even like a major oversight. It was just a small detail overlooked in one step. Oh, no. But it had this cascading effect, you know, like a domino effect. Right. One wrong move at the beginning and the whole thing can come crashing down. Wow. Yeah, that makes sense. 
And that's exactly why meticulously analyzing each and every stage of the performance model is so important. You need to catch those potential points of failure, no matter how small they seem, and then build in safeguards through targeted training. It's almost like a risk management strategy. That's a great way to put it. Disguise as a learning initiative. It's true. And that's how you, as the training expert, when you're using CAD, you earn that seat at the table with the decision makers. You're not just the training person anymore. You're a strategic advisor. Someone who understands how to optimize performance and how to mitigate risk, you become indispensable. You can become essential to the entire operation. Exactly. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Essential to the organization's success. Mm -hmm. And it goes way beyond just preventing those major mistakes. You know what really struck me about Guy's whole approach here? It's that focus on building a culture of continuous learning. It's not about just creating this one and done training program. It's about designing a system that can flex and change right along with the business. Makes sense because the business world, it's always doing change. Yeah, right. Training has got to keep up. Right. It's like that old saying, you know, the only constant is change. But with mm -hmm. that solid CAD foundation, you're ready for anything, right? Absolutely. You're built to adapt. And that's where the curriculum council comes into play. This is something that Guy really emphasizes throughout his presentation. You need a dedicated team to really champion and maintain that CAD system, making sure it stays aligned with the needs of the business, which, as we know, are constantly changing. So it's kind of like having a pit crew for your training program, right? They're constantly making those little adjustments to keep everything running smoothly. Precisely. Always keeping an eye on what's working, what's not, identifying any new needs making sure that the training stays relevant and impactful. That council, it acts as a critical link between the training function and the business itself. This is great stuff, but let's bring it back to our listeners for a second. You know, why should anyone listening even care about CAD, even if they're not in a training role? That's a great question. And it really gets to the heart of why we do these deep dives, don't you think? Awesome. The principles behind CAD, they reach far beyond just training. It's a framework. You can use it for thinking about any kind of learning or development initiative, whether it's personal, team-oriented, even organization-wide. So it's less about the specific training courses themselves and more about adopting a system for continuous improvement, no matter what your field or industry. You got it. Think of it this way, Cad. It's about analyzing a problem, breaking it down into smaller, more manageable parts, and then designing a solution that directly addresses those goals. Those yeah. skills, those are transferable to any domain. So even if you never design an actual training module, understanding those CAD principles, that can make you a more effective problem solver and a more strategic thinker overall. 100%. It can even make you a better learner. Think about that curriculum council idea. What if we each created our own personal versions? Whoa, you mean like assembling our own personal board of advisors? I like where this is going. Yeah. Yeah, like we each handpick our own team of experts, our own personal board of directors for growth. I love that. Right. Instead of like a formal council, though, we're talking mentors, colleagues, people we admire, authors, thought leaders, anyone who really inspires us. Those voices that challenge us to be better. Exactly. Surround yourself with people who will push you to keep learning. Yeah. Question your assumptions. Help you stay on track. Mm -hmm. We might not have, you know, multi-million dollar budgets like those Spartan Explorers. Sure. But the principles are the same. Yeah. We can all use that analysis that design that mindset of continuous improvement in our own lives. Absolutely. It's about being intentional with our learning, right? Not just passively soaking things up. We become the architects of our own development. That's the key takeaway here, I think. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes this whole deep dive so valuable. It's not just about understanding CAD as a concept. It's about taking those insights and actually using them for our own growth. So as we wrap up our deep dive into CAD with Guy Wallace, it's clear that this is so much more than just a training methodology. This is a mindset. It's about approaching learning and development with this strategic performance-driven lens. And that can be a game changer whether you're building a training program for a company or mapping out your own personal growth plan. Couldn't have said it better myself. Uh -huh. And if there's one thing I hope our listeners take away from this conversation, it's that importance of collaboration, that customer-centric approach that Guy emphasizes. Engage your stakeholders, really understand their needs, and build a system that gets results. And don't be afraid to embrace the messiness along the way, right? Oh, Analysis and design, they're iterative processes. Yeah. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to have to adjust course. But that's how we learn and grow. Exactly. Be adaptable. Mm. Stay curious. Mm. And never stop learning. Because who knows? What? You might just save yourself or your company a $5 billion mistake down the line. Now that's something to think about.
That's it for today. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the world of curriculum architecture design. Until next time, keep those brains engaged and those learning muscles flexed. Thank you.